Uh, my name is Tyler Tolman. Had anybody ever heard of me before? Maybe? Seen a post I wrote online? No? Anybody ever heard of Don Tolman? No idea? Um, one person? Yeah? Have you seen him speak in person? No. Just heard of him and his crazy mustache? Awesome. So I'm here obviously to talk a little bit about health. Um, do you guys think health is important to your business? Why? Don't have health, you don't have wealth, can't do anything. Absolutely. What would happen to your business if you were diagnosed with cancer tomorrow? Probably wouldn't work out too well, would it? Especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're someone whose your business is focused on you. You guys get what I'm saying? I'm going to be sharing some statistics of what's actually going on in the world. And it's some really eye-opening stuff. So I'm going to start off just sharing some statistics of what's happening. And I really want to lay a groundwork for why people are getting sick, why disease exists. I'm not just some random guy who's throwing out some ideas and stuff. I have a very solid foundation of scientific work I'm going to be sharing with you guys. And a lot of ancient history and knowledge and things I want to bring to the forefront as well. So I want to actually show you where disease comes from. Um, and then talk about those things and once we're on the same page then I want to talk about some basic principles of health because I believe that health is simple what is health it's simple it's daily habits and we all know it we all know that if we have bad habits and we're doing those bad habits day after day after day after day after day after day we're gonna end up having symptoms getting sick feeling like crap on medications and all these other things which we see people all around us doing so really health comes down to just creating some healthy habits, getting into those healthy habits, and then you start to see improvements, 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 have more clarity, have more energy, people like being around you, you have new ideas for your business, things start flowing and happening, and then you start to pick up on more and you want more and you want more. So you're either kind of in a downward trend, and a lot of us kind of know subconsciously wherever we're at, we're all kind of in that downward trend or not feeling very good or having things happening. Or we feel great, we feel fantastic, we're in flow when it comes to our health, and we're constantly looking for more that we can do. So I'm also going to get into a little bit of fasting and the potential of what fasting can do, kind of the ancient history behind it, biblical history, other things, and then the new science that shows some pretty cool things about fasting. Does that sound all right? Yeah, sounds good? Fantastic. Did anybody have anything to say? Did you have something to say or are you just chilling with the microphone? Backup singer, yeah? Awesome. So the name of my presentation is called Live Healthy, Be Happy. What is it? Live Healthy, Be Happy. So to start, we're just going to turn to someone next to us and say, Live Healthy. Go. Great job. <laughs> now turn to someone and say, Be Happy. So live healthy and be happy. I just want people to simply live healthy you know, lifestyle, and it comes down, like I said, simple principles. Eat fruits and vegetables, go for a walk, drink some water, get out in the sun. Don't buy all the hype that the sun's out to kill you. Simple things like this, and that's what I'm going to get into. And then be happy, because a lot of people are so caught up in health, they got sticks up their asses and causing so much stress, you know what I mean, that they're better off probably just eating a cheeseburger and having a good time. So it's a mixture of both things, and I'm not here with an agenda. I'm not here to promote a raw food lifestyle, a vegan diet, a paleo diet, any specific form or religion or anything else. I'm simply here to offer some ideas that potentially you can grab onto one that resonates with you and you can simply take a little step in your life. Wow, that's one thing I probably could do better and you start to do that and all of a sudden you start to feel better. When you start to feel better, you're like, oh, that guy had some other ideas. Maybe I'll look at that. Take another little step. Am I making sense? So it's not about how fast we go in any direction, it's just having kind of a, a direction to move towards. Um, as he said before, the name of my business is called Conscious Lifestyler. You know, a lot of people are like, what's consciousness, man? What does that even mean? And consciousness is simply awareness. We're all conscious right now. We're all aware. The more awareness that we have towards the things we're bringing into our environment as far as energies, people, foods, and these types of things, more awareness we have of those things, what they are and how they affect us, the more consciousness we're going to have. So I'm simply sharing a lot of awareness of what's going on in the world so you guys can be educated, go home, 
hopefully not poison yourselves, and live long, healthy, happy lives, because I know you all have amazing ideas for business and things that you'll be sharing with the world, which will hopefully bless my life. So Conscious Lifestyler is simply about improving your own lifestyle a little bit at a time. So, getting started, this is my father. His name's Don Tolman. He's called the uh, Cowboy of Whole Food Medicine or the Indiana Jones of Whole Food Medicine. If you look him up, he's got amazing YouTube videos. He's traveled the world. He spent about 17 years staying with long-lived cultures and tribes around the planet. The Tarahumari Indians, uh, which are called the Swift-Footed Ones, if you guys have heard of them. Um, he stayed in different places around the world and essentially with people that live to be over 100. They're called centurions. And there's three cultures that exist on the planet right now um, that are long-lived people. They pretty much are disease-free. They have perfect eyesight. They have nice, beautiful teeth. They have abundant energy and clarity into their hundreds. National Geographic's crews go and hang out with these people. And these 20, 30-year-old camera crew guys hiking down to the river every morning with them have a hard time keeping up with these 80 and 90-year-olds as they're walking up and down. They've been doing it their whole lives. They have a pretty pristine type of lifestyle. So these are the types of things I want to be sharing. One of them is called the Abkhazians of Russia, the Hunza people of Pakistan, which are a bright, brilliant, happy, go-lucky, awesome people. They're the ones they love studying the most. And then there's a place called Vilcabamba Valley in Central America, where these people live to be 120. Supposedly there's records for 150, but regardless of them living to 150, at 90 they're still looking and feeling good. They have their teeth. They don't have cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and the basic things that we deal with in a Western culture. So that's a little bit of my background. Um, I grew up with my mother. I grew up in a situation of what you call a standard American diet or sad diet, yeah. eating hamburgers, hot dogs, drinking the crap chocolate milk and junk food I was getting for the first 16 years of my life. But when I was 13 years old, I went out to stay with my father for a couple of summers. And when I got there, it was beautiful. He had 200 acres. It was rolling hills on a farm. There were ponds, swimming pool. It was pretty much paradise. If you can imagine, you know, a kid growing up in a little gangster town, you know, poor city, growing up on welfare, to all of a sudden going out and having exposure to nature. And he was growing foods and doing these types of things. It was quite a shock. And about a month after being there, a bunch of people arrived with cancer, diabetes, heart disease, all types of women with massive leg stuff, weeping coming out of her body, and people that literally, literally looked like they were going to die. And as a 13-year-old being like, oh my God, what are these people doing here? Get them, you know, the hospital's that way. I don't know what these people are doing here. My father explained to me that he was running a healing program. So he would actually take vegetables out of the garden and fruits out of the trees and buy what he didn't have access to growing himself and he would make fresh squeezed juices. And he would put these people onto a juice fast and teach them what he called the words of life. And I would watch these people pale looking, sickly looking, in a period of one week, like a spark igniting their skin clearing up, looking completely different. In two weeks, massively different. By the time they went home, three to four weeks later, these people were not the same. And these were people, because my father in college was actually going to be a neurosurgeon, literally had what it took going through school with his grades, everything they did, he was super onto it. He could have become a neurosurgeon, um, but he didn't like the politics of it and left the whole thing and went out on his own journey. But he knew a lot of the physicians, oncologists, and people in different prestigious places in the United States. And these people knew about my father, and so when they had cancer patients that were terminal, and after they had tried chemotherapy and different things, it didn't work, and they were saying, well, you can pretty much go home and get your affairs in order and die, or you can go see this guy, Don Tolman, because he's apparently having some success with working with people through fasting and doing some other weird stuff. So, yeah, 13 years old, I was exposed to that, and it was quite a transformation. And that happened for a couple years just during the summer, and then I'd go back to eating my hamburgers and hot dogs and doing stupid stuff. And when I turned 16, I was pretty much suicidal. Um, I hated myself. I hated my life. And I hated the people. I didn't hate the people I was around, but I hated the things that we were doing. Uh, I was doing really stupid things that I don't really need to talk about, what a lot of teenagers probably get into when they don't feel loved and things of this nature. Uh, so I broke down. 
called my father crying on the phone and said, you know, I don't know what to do. I hate my life. And he said, well, have your mom take you to the airport tomorrow. I'll have an airline ticket waiting for you. And I went to live with my father when I was 16 years old. And that changed my life. I quit smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, smoking marijuana, doing other stupid drugs. Completely quit in one day overnight. Completely changed my diet lifestyle based on what they were doing. And had a complete transformation. Traveled with my father around the United States, about three to five different cities a week. Speaking about health and, and selling the products that he had. Whole food, organic based snacks and things like this. Um, and I learned a lot. I spent about 10 years either living with my father or just down the street from my father. Uh, and then I decided to go out into the world and start sharing information and learning from other people, doctors around the United States that I really liked, going to Japan with Dr. Masuri Moto and different people around the world that I was inspired by, learning a lot more. Um, and then eventually my dream came true because I'd always wanted to do what my dad did when I was 13 years old, which was facilitate juice fasting events. So now I bring about 30 people at a time, 30 to 35 people from Australia. We do a seven day juice fast, we go whitewater rafting, we go snorkeling, we go do lots of fun things. And by the end of one week, people are like, oh my God, I can't believe I haven't eaten food. And we just fill them full of juices. We get them doing very specific daily habits in the morning, certain exercises, certain skin cleaning, certain detoxification to clean out the organs. And I'm totally off track here. Shut up Tyler and just click the button. Going to be here for a long time. Just kidding. It's a joke. So, looking at diabetes. Diabetes is Australia's fastest growing chronic disease. How many of you are from Australia? Everyone. Perfect. No? Where are you from? UK. Excellent. I was just in London last week. Beautiful weather. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's sunny outside. Put on some shorts, get outside, and it's pouring rain. I'm like, what the hell? Go back up put on some pants and get an umbrella, come out and it's sunny. And I'm like, oh my God, love the UK. So Australia's fastest growing chronic disease. I use Australia because that's where I go most and most people are Australian. It's probably the same in the UK. Fastest growing chronic disease. And depending on what you had for breakfast, what you put in your coffee, what kind of artificial sweetener, what's going on that day, you might go in, get tested, get your blood tested and find out that you're diabetic as well. But once a doctor tells you you're diabetic, you'll be diabetic for the rest of your life. They'll put you on insulin. How many of you know somebody that's shooting themselves with insulin, taking pills, measuring their blood five, six times a day? Uh, it's not very convenient. Um, and what I'd like to say is, you know, there's a, a video you can watch called 30 Days to Raw. And it's a doctor by the name of Dr. Gabriel Cousins. 30 Days to Raw. To Raw, R-A-W. Dr. Gabriel Cousins took 10 diabetics. Two of them were type 1 diabetics. He took them onto a ranch and he fed them what's called raw food. What is raw food? Fresh fruits and vegetables, period. A high carbohydrate, low fat, plant-based diet, specifically. For 30 days, these people ate that food. For the first five to 10, they hated their lives. They wanted to kill themselves. Everything sucked. They were being tortured. Then all of a sudden they realized that their palate was changing, they kind of liked the food, and they felt better, and they had more energy. And you guys just go watch the video. It's a great documentary that was put together by Dr. Gabriel Cousins. And pretty much what he proves is in 30 days, anybody with type 2 diabetes can be healed completely. Don't even need it. Don't even need the medication. I bring people on a juice fast, and I've gotten type, type 2 diabetics completely off of insulin with the best blood sugar they've had in 10 years. Drinking fruit juices. Exactly. Which in the Western perception is full of sugar. I can't eat fruit, I'm diabetic. But then they eat Snickers candy bars and shoot themselves with a shot. It's quite interesting. So look into that. There's other people doing it now, 30-day programs where they can literally reverse type 2 diabetes. Even type 1 diabetes, they're radically reducing the amount of insulin. You know, the people I've worked with have little pumps that they wear that they're constantly pumping in insulin into their bodies. I've gotten them to the point where they can reduce it by 60%, which is a really big deal. And in that reduction of 60% of the insulin in type 1s I'm talking about, which supposedly can never produce insulin again, even in those type 1s, their blood sugar is better, they feel better um, from this type of lifestyle. 
Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in Australia. It kills one Australian every 12 minutes. Affects one in six Australians with 3.7 million. Prevents 1.4 million people from living a full life because of disability caused by the disease. Affects two out of every three families. The thing about heart disease is you could look just like me. You could look fit, you could look young, you could look healthy, but what you don't realize is that there's an accumulation of plaque in your arteries. There's little atheromas forming, there's things going on from our dietary intake, and if one of those little things breaks loose, I could have a heart attack. Literally, right now. So this one is not, you know, somebody that's highly overweight, somebody that's looking sick, somebody that's older. This could be literally anybody. And in fact, my grandfather died before the age of 40 on my mom's side, which means I have a genetic propensity of heart disease. And the reality is these diseases run in families because the families typically eat the same kind of diet. There's a guy by the name of Dr. Esselstein in the United States, the leading cardi cardiologist at one of the most prestigious places in the United States, the Cleveland Clinic. And he can take 20, 30, 50 heart disease patients that have had up to 20 cardiac events in the last few years. He'll put them onto a plant-based whole food diet and for the next 10 to 20 years they will not have a single cardiac event. He's proven through showing people that you can absolutely reverse it. He actually shows people cardiograms, x-rays, everything else of arteries by the heart that are blocked off and literally close to having a heart attack. And in two to three years, they're fully pumping and rocking again, simply by eating plant-based whole food diet. Quite simple. So where I'm getting at with this, especially with heart disease, is just like the more fiber we have, the more plant-based whole foods we have, these phytonutrients, these vitamins, these minerals, these fibers come into our body and help to keep it clean, clean it out. When we have too much fat, when we have too much cholesterol, these things accumulate in our cardiovascular system and they accumulate as plaque. And plaque over time and distance is going to create either a stroke, a heart attack, you know, varicose veins. You know, there's all kinds of signs and symptoms, low energy, Alzheimer's, a lot of things. So it's really a simplicity. You know, the only way we get excess cholesterol and fat is from eating basically an animal-based diet, which is a diet of the rich. Only nowadays it's all subsidized so everybody can afford it and afford way too much. And in fact, it's a lot cheaper than anything else these days. You go to McDonald's and have a whole meal for 99 cents. You know, go buy a salad and it costs you $5 or more, depending on where you go. Cancer statistics. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in Australia, Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. One in two Australians will be diagnosed with cancer. I've been running around giving these presentations for at least 10 years, probably like 12 years. And I can tell you the statistics I used to spout out to people were one in five got cancer. And even back then, one in five was shocking. And then it was one in three women get breast cancer. And now they're saying one in two, and it used to say one in five people might get cancer in their lifetime. And now it's one in two people will get cancer in their lifetime. One in two people will. They, write, they are saying by 2020, the statistic will probably be like everybody gets cancer in their lifetime. The reality of cancer, I believe, yeah, I probably shouldn't even say that, actually. But statistically, half the people in this room have it. And I'd go as far to say that a lot of people already have it. It's just not progressed to the point of being recognizable. There's three stages of cancer. One is initiation of cancer, which is a fairly quick stage. It's when we receive too many carcinogens in the form of food or in the form of personal care products, environmental toxicities, things that are carcinogenic, cancer causing in the genes. When we have too much of this for our liver to deal with, because our liver can deal with a certain amount of carcinogens, we have too much those carcinogens spill over into the cells, and when a carcinogen affects the cell and transforms the DNA, and that DNA replicates, you have cancer. As soon as that happens, you have cancer. Then they have a stage called promotion. Promotion of cancer is the longest phase. This could take 5, 10, 15, 20 years, in fact. Now they know that we have anti-carcinogenic 
cells within our body that actually go around killing cancer. It's quite interesting. There's been studies on vegetarians, studies on people that have more of these types of things. But essentially what I'm getting at is if you're diagnosed with cancer, you know, we think, bang, you got cancer. Oh my God, where'd this come from? I just had, you know, it came out of the sky. That's the furthest thing from the truth. The reality is it was initiated probably 10 years ago by some carcinogenic thing in your diet, stuff you were using in your environment, and the, the daily practices of things you're doing are what's promoting its growth. It actually has a fuel that it needs, and that fuel specifically comes from our diet. Dr. T. Colin Campbell, Dr. Esselstein, Dr. Neil Bernard of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, they all know this stuff. And I'll be showing you facts as well. So where I'm going with this is once you're diagnosed with cancer, the cancer has already existed for a very long time. And it's just to the point to where now it's really all over your body or it's formed a tumor or something like this. Um, and then there's another stage, which is basically malignancy uh, and these other stages, which at that point, you're really in trouble. I believe at any point, even if you have malignancies, you can change it around. You can turn it around and actually come back to a perfect state of health. But why wait until then? Like, why not be doing the daily activities so that where we're at with the promotion of cancer within our body, we can reverse it and get rid of it completely. Cancer is the chief cause of death by disease in children under the age of 15. And I tell people about cancer all the time. They're like, yeah, but Tyler, you know, what about kids that are, you know, born with cancer? What about kids that are 3 or 5 or 10 years old? What about them? It's got to be genetic. And that's what they think, but I'll show you otherwise. Research shows the majority of disease we face in the country are preventable, not through new drugs or medical breakthroughs, but through simple lifestyle choices such as diet and exercise. Institute of Cancer Research. These guys are spending millions of dollars every single year, and what they have at the forefront of their website is basically saying simple lifestyle choices such as diet and exercise are the key to prevent cancer. And what I would say is the very things that prevent cancer are the very things that actually put cancer into remission. In fact, any disease that is out there, any disease, if you're diagnosed with a disease, you ask the doctor, what could I have done to prevent that? And you find out the principles of prevention, well, if you exercise more, if you drink more water, if you ate more vegetables or did these kinds of things, then you probably wouldn't have this disease. Well, those are the very things you need to start doing 100% to reverse it. Am I making sense? Follow me? American Cancer Society says that diet is the second greatest factor in the epidemic of cancer. Anybody know what number one factor of cancer? <laughs> Anybody? Smoking is the number one cause of cancer. Why? <laughs> Hundreds of carcinogens. means you're initiating cancer all the time. But wait a second, Tyler. My grandma smoked till she was 100, and she never got cancer. Ah, oh, wow, interesting. Well, this means that maybe we can actually initiate cancer within our body with carcinogens, which, number one, according to the American Cancer Society, is smoking. But what if grandma was doing something not to create the promotion process? Is this making sense? Which is the biggest process of fueling cancer, which hopefully I'll talk about a little bit later. I want to talk about the things specifically that are known carcinogens and known things that are causing a lot of these problems. And it's in our everyday food. If you just simply go into your pantry, open it up, turn around your packages, start to look at the canned goods, start to look at the packaged goods, start to look at your drinks, start to look at everything, everything in a grocery store down the aisles has some of this. Nearly everything. Unless you happen to find a, a bag of just salt corn chips that's just like corn, salt, and oil. Just about everything else has a lot of this stuff. Chemical preservatives, artificial sweeteners, hydrogenated oils, MSG, artificial colors, and genetically modified organisms. A little bit of information about some of these. Sodium benzoate and potassium benzoates are preservatives found in pickles, flour, margarine, fruit juices. You know, you're at the shop to buy a fruit juice because you're, you know, wanting to get healthier. You got this preservative in there, beer. This is the thing, you know, beer's been around for thousands of years. In fact, I was just learning about ancient Egyptian culture, and they, they had beer thousands of years ago. In fact, I'd say as far as, and I won't go that far, but at least three to 5,000 years ago, 
They were drinking beer. Remember the live healthy, be happy? It's the be happy part. Have a glass of wine, have a beer, enjoy yourself, have a good time, socialize with other people. Our lives are about our social lives as well. But the fact that they're putting preservatives into beer and wine that are fairly harsh is quite shocking. Salad dressing, again, having a salad, thinking you're doing better, soy sauce, toothpaste. Sheffield University cites lab tests suggest benzoates are known to cause leukemia, psoriasis of the liver, and Parkinson's disease. So do you think you should be eating this and drinking this on a daily basis? Probably not. Sodium sulfites act as a common food preservative for dried fruit, canned olives, peppers, corn syrup, white vinegar, and wine. Noted side effects of sodium sulfites include headache, joint pain, heart palpitation, allergies, and accumulation leads to cancer. So again, glass of wine, nice and healthy, good for the blood, good for the red blood cells. One of the best anti-aging foods is grapes because of anthocyanins. But you add in sodium sulfites, toxic to the liver. I used to be able to have a glass of wine, feel great. Once I went through some fasting, cleaned my body out, I drink a conventional glass of wine, I feel fully dehydrated in the morning, got a headache, can't do it. And it's because of these preservatives, not because of the wine. Sodium nitrates used in curing meat, such as ham, bacon, sausage, and bologna. FDA says it also worsens asthma and decreases lung function. Animal testing has shown that it causes high rates of cancer. Germany and Norway have banned the food preservative. I think Germany would be a great place to live, actually. I think recently they made like the whole country solar power. They've got more solar power and they know what to do with. Um, and apparently they care about their people. Aspartame. Aspartame is anything low, low sugar, no sugar. Diet Coke, Coke Zero. All, now it's in like cakes, dressings, cookies. Anything that you see that's low sugar or no sugar has aspartame. You take aspartame into a lab under this little thing called a Bunsen burner, and just before body temperature, it becomes formic acid, formaldehyde, and ethyl alcohol, which are three known carcinogens. So essentially, you're creating a plethora of symptoms, migraines, grand mal seizures, all types of other issues. There's a whole list of these things which if all of a sudden you're having these weird symptoms, seeing shiny things or getting ringing in your ears or all kinds of weird stuff, you'll go to a doctor to get checked and the doctor will most likely diagnose you with an actual disease like epilepsy or some different form of thing that's actually caused from this and then you'll get on some form of medication to hopefully suppress the symptoms that this is causing but then you'll end up having probably symptoms from that. Anyways, I think you guys get the idea. Trans fats uh, never existed on, on the face of the earth until a few years ago when we decided to mix hydrogen with oils and create plastic. This is made out of plastic. You take crude oil out of the ground, you shoot hydrogen into it, and you make different forms of plastic. Well, food companies took food grade oil, like vegetable oil, they shoot hydrogen into it, it turns black, thick, it smells to high heaven, but they can deodorize that and do some stuff with it, and then you have plastic, food grade plastic. So now you can buy potato chips that are $2 cheaper than real potato chips. They look like real potato chips because of the pictures on it. But if you turn it over, it says hydrogenated palm kernel oil. And that's pretty much added plastic as a filler, so it costs a lot less. But when you add that as a filler, it doesn't taste as good. So what do you have to do? Add MSG, because MSG is a natural flavor enhancer. It also does three things inside the body. Number one, it's the most highly addictive substance known to man. It affects the brain, it's highly addictive, MSG. Uh, number two, it causes your pancreas to overproduce insulin by five times the amount, which is a spell for disaster when it comes to diabetes. The MSG was developed specifically to cause diabetes in rats and mice. So what happened when a lot of people were eating a lot of sugar and a lot of fat and developing diabetes essentially, they went into a lab and said, let's cause diabetes in laboratory rats and mice and then figure out if we can find a cure. What they figured out is you can't actually cause diabetes in rats and mice because they don't overeat to the point of developing diabetes. So this is a major problem. So they identified a protein that they could break down and take out one of the essential amino acids called monosodium glutamate. When you concentrate monosodium glutamate, it affects the receptors in the brain, that was the third one, 
affects the receptors in the brain that tell you when you're full. So when you're eating and you have MSG at a high amount or a concentrated rate, you actually don't feel full. This is why a lot of people go out to Asian restaurants, and now it's pretty much in everything, but it started with Asian restaurants, and you could eat like noodles and you could eat stuff and you just keep eating and eating and eating until you literally could not eat anymore. You physically could not stuff any more in, but you still felt pretty good. And then you go back because it's highly addictive. So the stuff was actually developed. They took this little protein amino acid and sprinkled it onto the food of mice and rats. They became addicted to the food. Their pancreas overproduced insulin. They didn't stop eating because they never got full. And this is what had happened. You went from this kind of laboratory rat into a big fat thing, solely from adding MSG. So after they figured this out, figured that they couldn't cure it unless they stopped feeding them MSG, what they did is they replicated insulin instead. So now people with diabetes, they could give them insulin and that was the solution. But nobody ever talked about these laboratory studies and now if you go into just about any grocery store on the planet, at least in the Western world, you'll find MSG in everything. Here in, here in Indonesia, they love it. They've got literally bag, bags of crystal, just MSG. They sell it at the store. People buy it and they put it all over their stuff. Yeah, this stuff's amazing. Tastes great. Makes you love the food. Awesome. It's quite shocking. Food additives that frequently contain MSG. There was a big hoo-ha about MSG quite a while ago, so they stopped labeling it MSG, but now it can fall under the guise of malt extract, malt flavoring, bouillon broth, natural flavors, and a bunch of other things. So if a package says natural flavors on it, it can potentially be MSG. Why? Because it comes from a protein and it's essentially a natural flavoring. I went into a grocery store. I've got photos of hundreds of products, but I used to buy these chips that said no added MSG on them. Very popular brand in Australia. I used to love these things. Why did I love them so much? Because I was highly addicted to them. And I, I would always question it like, yeah, it says natural flavors on the back, but it says no added MSG, so it's got to be all right. And I just justified that because I was addicted. No added MSG. So I called the company in the grocery store one day, said, hey, you know, I'm one of your consumers in a grocery store. I'm looking at your product. I'm highly allergic to MSG, which is the truth. We're all allergic to it. Highly allergic to this stuff. And it says no added MSG. I need to know if there's any other forms of MSG that's in this product. And they said, please give us your phone number and your email. We'll either call you or email you within 24 hours. About two weeks later, I got an email that said, we would highly recommend you do not use our product if you're allergic to MSG. So you can come to your own conclusion about that. Food coloring. Blue dye in question is FD and C blue number one. It's made from coal tar. What's it made from? Coal tar, which makes it a dangerous substance through the high content of toxic substances such as mercury, lead, and fluoride that are found in coal. New England Journal of Medicine. USA Today said that studies suggest that coal tar may cause leukemia, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. Coal tar is known to initiate cancer. And we see all these little kids running around with the cute little lollies. Come here, Billy, let me get a photo. And it's cute. You know, kids sucking on these suckers. They got a blue tongue. They love it. It's fun. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. You know, what's shocking is I was online, literally haven't cried in a really long time. It's not something I, you know talk about a lot, but I was online and I looked up this video and it said, new cure for cancer. I was like, oh wow, let's check this out. And I went on there and there's a bunch of doctors and the parents in this room with this little girl. This little girl had no hair. She's hooked up to an oxygen tube and she's sitting there like this. And they're all excited because they found the new cure for cancer, which is the AIDS virus. No shit. We can give this girl the AIDS virus or a form of the AIDS virus and it will actually attack cancer in her body and she'll be cured of cancer. And the whole time, she's sitting there sucking on one of these bright blue icy pops. Sitting there eating this bright blue icy pop. And I just, I don't know, I lost it. I went through a couple phases. I went through a phase of wanting to get an M16 and go into that hospital to start shooting people. And then I went through a phase of like just divine sadness that we're so freaking stupid that we don't get it. You know, doctors are really the smartest dumb people on the planet. 
Not all doctors, but most of them. Why? Because they're smart. They're smart, and they go to school, and they can get through all that stuff, but they're dumb. They're dumb in the sense that they don't realize that a simple carrot and an apple and drinking water and getting out in the sun and exercising could reverse a lot of the things that they're drugs that are poisoning people. You get what I'm saying? And look, there's a place for it. There's a place for pharmaceuticals. I'm not totally knocking it. You know, if I'm in a car accident and I got freaking my bones hanging out of my body and I'm nearly dying, I'm not going to ask you for a carrot. I'm going to ask you for some morphine. You know, and I'm a very dangerous person. Me and John Abbott go downhill mountain biking. We, me and Shane go out motorbiking all the time. And you come off these bikes and thank God that there are painkillers and things that exist to deal with that type of stuff. But this is what I'm talking about. Simple things. Simple daily habits. It's just because we don't know. It's not because parents, parents don't care. Parents love their children. And if a parent actually knew that they could cause cancer by simply giving them some candy, do you think they'd do it? Would you? Hope not. Genetically modified organisms. You guys know what this is? GMOs? American Academy of Environmental Medicine reported that several animal studies indicate serious health risks associated with GM food, including infertility, immune problems, accelerated aging, faulty insulin regulation, and changes in the major organs and gastrointestinal system. How many people think they eat genetically modified food? Not very many. Try not to. That's the point. The fact is... Sad fact is probably most of you are eating GMO every single day. Because if you shop at a grocery store, all the little additives can be genetically modified. And there's massive crops of genetically modified foods of corn, corn syrups, bases, flavorings, fillers, all kinds of stuff. And you know, I've read 120 pages of the labeling laws in Australia. And if it's genetically modified whole food, they have to label it. Which means if you walk into the fruits and veg aisle and you're looking at whole foods it has to say genetically modified on it so you know you're safe whereas if you walk down the aisle and you pick up something you have no idea because a lot of those little fillers and numbers and things on the back could potentially be supporting Monsanto and have genetically modified foods in it and this is why it's a problem since then findings include thousands of sheep buffalo and goats in India died after grazing on GM cotton plants Mice eating GM corn for the long term had fewer and smaller babies. More than half the babies of rats fed GM soy died within three weeks. Testicle cells of mice and rats on GM soy changed significantly. By the third generation, most GM soy fed hamsters lost the ability to have babies. So if you really look at the animal studies, it's showing within three generations, we might not have the ability to reproduce. Well... As far as I'm concerned, I have to do everything physically possible not to have kids. You get what I'm saying? Everything physically possible not to have kids. And I have more and more people, hundreds and even thousands of people now, sending me messages saying, you know, how do I have kids? What do I need to do? What type of cleanse? What do I do for fertility? What kinds of foods? IVF, all these treatments. And it's like, where is this coming from? Why is it that people are losing fertility? Well... GMOs have been around for quite a while now, you know, and for some people, three generations might only be 60 years. For others, it could be 100 years. But the potential for this, potentially, if GMO is in our food supply, which it is, and people are eating it, it's known to cause this, potentially, we could eradicate the human race. We could actually get to a point of not being able to reproduce and not knowing why. Or get to a point of where we at least have to take sperm and eggs and do something to it and then create procreation through a process and then we're living in the matrix. Yeah, they could probably supply a nice chemical that would reverse the process. You'd be shocked to know what Monsanto does. They have something called the Terminator gene. Anybody heard of Terminator gene? It was actually outlawed. It's still in the food, but it's considered inactive, according to Monsanto. They still put it in, but they say it's inactive. The Terminator gene is essentially... Let's say Monsanto comes into, into Bali and they say, hey, we've got this amazing form of papayas. And you can grow these papayas and they're juicy and they're succulent and they are resistant from weather and they're resistant from this and you'll have the best papayas. So they dupe everybody into buying these seeds. 
These people buy these seeds. It's got this little thing called the terminator gene in it. And what happens is by the second year of production of fruit, the terminator gene will actually kill the plant. Meaning you'd have to plant a new one or you can buy the anti-terminator gene chemicals. No shit. And if you buy then this fertilizer, you can put it on the plant and it'll produce another year of fruit. And every year you have to buy the chemical to put on it so that the plant doesn't self-terminate. This is a reality. This is totally true. I'm not making this up. The problem with this is if you plant a Terminator gene GMO tree, it pollinates other trees. And then when it pollinates the other trees, they all contain the Terminator gene when they reproduce. So you could potentially, you could potentially eradicate an entire species of plants simply by planting one if the Terminator gene is active. So for Monsanto, that would be great because then everybody would be reliant on them to buy chemicals to keep all their crops going. It's quite shocking. And this is why it's important to know that if you're uneducated and unaware of the foods you're buying, you're actually directly supplying finance to these companies that have who knows what agendas. So to give you an idea, um, you know, I travel a lot. I travel to Australia and do tours and I flew into Melbourne one time, got off the plane, you know, feeling like I just got out of a microwave like you do sometimes. And I saw Boost Juice. Boost Juice is my favorite place. I go over there. I'm like, hey, guys. They're all like, you know, bubbly and happy. You know, the Boost Juice guys. Hey, what can I make you? Yeah. I got some music playing. They're all stoked. I'm like, can I get, uh, let's see, some apple juice. Just put that into a blender. Add some strawberries and some bananas. Blend it. I'm good to go. Yeah, sure. Hey. So they give me this juice, and I got it. And I'm like, awesome. So I'm sitting there waiting, actually, for this smoothie. And there's this little girl crinkling this package over here. Mommy, mommy, buy me this. And mommy genuinely picks up the package to look at it to make sure it's safe. This is what she sees. Hi, I'm Barry. Bite me. Isn't that cute? Says, made from real fruit, all natural colors and flavors, source of fiber with added calcium. A blend of fruit bites with all natural berry flavor, coconut, and yogurt. Seem all right? This seems all right, right? Some coconut, some yogurt, some flavoring, whatever. So I went over and had a look, and this is the actual case of the scenario. And look, this is just one random thing. This is the case of most items everywhere you go. So just starting off, we have fruit. Yay! 32%. Hold on a second. It's concentrated apple puree, dried apples that contain preservative 223. So I've got this little app on my phone. You can take it out. It's called Chemical Maze. What's it called? Chemical Maze, M-A-I-Z-E. If you download Chemical Maze, um, there's a simple version that gives you most of it. If you want the whole version, it's like five or six dollars. But you download this, you can literally punch in any number and it'll bring up what it is and the tests that have been done on animals and if it's safe or not. Some of them they don't know, but most of them are identified. So if you look up this, it's a preservative basically known to cause cancer. Then it's got reconstituted mixed berry juices, 1.5%. I guess just so they can call it a berry bites. Wheat semolina, not quite sure what that is, but could potentially be genetically modified. Maltodextrin from wheat, could be, I don't know, genetically modified. Yogurt confectionery. Anybody ever bought yogurt confectionery before? I think it's like confetti, like those little party poppers, but uh, I don't know what that is. Sugar, vegetable fat, hold on a second. There's your hydrogenated palm kernel oil, trans fat. Trans fat replaces good fat in the body. It's known to be carcinogenic because it interferes with the metabolic system of the body. Again, that's plastic filler. So the berry bites are actually just plastic filler with a bunch of crap. Uh, milk solids, I thought milk was liquid personally. Uh, yogurt powder, you know, as you do, get some yogurt powder, add some water, poof, there you go. Emulsifier, you guys know what emulsifier is? Me neither. But it's made from soy lecithin. Soy, probably most of the soy on the planet is genetically modified. Uh, unless it says organic or non-GMO, then you probably should avoid it. And look, 90% of the chocolate that most people are addicted to, soy lecithin. Hey, every bar of chocolate on the planet, soy lecithin. Ah, unless it says organic chocolate, or unless it's coming from Bali, there's certain ones that don't have soy lecithin that taste 10 times better than any other chocolate, then you need to be making it yourself. You see what happens here? La, 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 la. This is the state of the world. La, 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 
La la la. Kids can't reproduce, but I don't care because I'm eating my chocolate and it tastes good. Just messing with you. But, you know, sugar, isomalt, wheat protein, coconut, hold on a second, contains preservative 220. So anytime you see something that looks halfway good, got to add some preservative to it. Seaweed extract, not sure why. Humectant, that's next to the emulsifier in the whole food section, you know, that bucket of humectant that tastes so nice. I'm just kidding, I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's got regulators in it. Regulators! 330, 296, look those up. Vegetable oil, natural flavor. This is where they sneak in the MSG, keep you addicted to it, keep you coming back. Natural colors, right. That natural 120 tree down the road, right? Natural 120. Fruit and vegetable extracts, got agents in there. It's agent 553B to 904. I think they're on to us. Hide the gooseberry bites. Yeah, so this is all the crap that's in your kids' gooseberry bites, and we wonder why why cancer is the leading cause of death in children under the age of 15. Did you get that? Did you hear that correctly? This is why. Then it has a specific warning on it. Contains sulfites in quantities greater than 10 milligrams per kg and should be noted by sensitive persons. Well, I'm a sensitive person. Maybe I should take a note. Shocking. Remember that 120 natural flavor? Here's what it actually is. This is the chemical maize app. Animal derived, extract obtained from the dried bodies of the female Dactylopius coccus insect. I kid you not. I've seen a documentary of these people picking bugs off of cactuses and putting them into baskets and then they smash them up and they use that for the color red in all kinds of food products. Not only is it just disgusting and the fact that you would think like there wouldn't be bugs in your boost berry bites. It's also known to cause anaphylaxis, asthma, contact dermatitis, hyperactivity. Children's Goop recommends to avoid it. Meaning you got a bunch of hyperactive kids running around eating this stuff, causing it to be even worse. Then you can put them on Ritalin or some other form of cocaine style drug. Anyways, you guys get it? You know, and we're sneezing, you got itching at the back of your throat, you got stuff going on all the time, and you're wondering, like, why is this happening? Must be the pollen. Oh, it must be developing allergies. Bullshit. You're eating things that are causing allergic reactions in your body. It's toxic stuff that's causing you to sneeze. It's toxic stuff that's causing you to itch and get rashes and all these other things. So my question to you is, what kind of toxic products or things are you addicted to that maybe you've been eating or drinking. So for this section, just turn to the person next to you and have a quick conversation about maybe some of the foods you've been eating. All right, go. And basically say that, you know, our body does have a level of being able to deal with things, like I said before. Like it's quite obvious, you know, people smoking their whole lives, people eating crap and somehow still <laughs> seeming to operate and get through things. So I don't want to really like scare you and think that you have to change everything drastically overnight but it's good to just gain an awareness of what's going on in the world and at least try to transform your home environment which I think is the most important so when I'm at home everything's pristine but that's taken me years to get to a point to where all my personal care items all my food all my pantry everything is actually whole foods it's put together and made in an awesome way I still eat the most amazing food on the planet but I know it doesn't have any of this crap Occasionally I go out, you know, I travel, I do things, and I know there's places that I go to. I Mostly when I'm buying things, I look at it, make sure it doesn't have most of the stuff in it. But look, you know, at times when I don't have access, I eat out somewhere, it's probably got some of it in it, but I know my body's going to deal with it. Does that make sense? And if I know if I had something really shocking, best thing you could do is get some exercise, go sit in a sauna, sweat it out, drink a lot of water, whatever you got to do. Um, so the idea of this presentation is just to make you aware so that you start to make steps. I'm not expecting anybody all of a sudden become, you know, super pristine, raw foodist, amazingness overnight. But some people are motivated and want to do that, and that's great too. So I just want to share a little bit of information from the American Cancer Society. Uh, no single non-governmental, not-for-profit organization in the U.S. has invested more to find the causes and cures of cancer than the American Cancer Society. In fact, the American Cancer Society has helped make possible almost every major cancer research breakthrough since 1946. 
Every year they spend about $120 million to $150 million. They've been doing this since 1946, which is billions of dollars in actual cancer research. Now you can see where a lot of the money is going. You know, millions in biology, cause and etiology, treatment, prevention, including nutrition, physical activity, tobacco control, early detection, diagnosis, prognosis, etc., etc. So what does the American Cancer Society say? Well, if you click on Learn About Cancer, you can see genetics here. Because I know a lot of times I do posts on Facebook and other social media outlets, and people are like, oh, yeah, that's, that's nice, fine, and dandy, Tyler, but we all know that cancer is genetic. You guys heard that before? Everybody's saying cancer is genetic. Well, what they say, number one, some types of cancer run in certain families. That doesn't mean it's genetic. Probably runs in families because they're doing the same types of things. But most cancers are not clearly linked to the genes we inherit from our parents. So what they're saying is most cancer is not genetic. Then you click on tobacco and learn about tobacco. One third of all cancer, so let's just say there's a billion, or let's say there's a million people with cancer. One third of that is directly related to cancer. Then if you look at diet and physical activity, they say that another one third of all cancer is directly attributed um, to diet, essentially, diet and lifestyle. Now this, the group on the planet spending the most amount of money possible, billions of dollars on cancer research, causes it is smoking, diet, and exercise. They're saying literally we could eradicate two-thirds of all cancer on the planet, in fact, if people just stopped smoking, ate fruits and vegetables, and went for a walk. And their guidelines are mapped out. They basically say, eat five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables per day. Now, this is actually very simple. Like a simple apple is a couple servings of fruit, if that makes sense. And the idea is, if you eat five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables, you're getting a lot of phytonutrients, you're getting a lot of antioxidants, which are those anti-cancer compounds. Right? You're getting a lot of fiber to clean the body out, and there's a lot less room for all the shit. Did I say shit? I think I did. <laughs> Gets all the shit out, right? You guys following me? So it's very simple. Add five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables to your daily diet. I don't care what you eat. I don't care if you want to go have a big fat steak. Great, do it. But during the day, eat five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables. The other recommendation is hydration. They say eight to 12 glasses of water. Should be de depending on your gender and depending on your size. They say that women need about eight glasses of water a day, men 12. Now this is, this is all, I believe, very low but at least get the recommended amount. Am I making sense? A lot of people don't even drink a bottle of water through the day. Maybe some Coke, maybe some tea. What's that? Yeah. And it's shocking. You know, we sweat nearly a liter of water a day. So how is that being replaced? You know, and a lot of things, low energy, you know, tiredness, headaches, nausea, just a low level of thinking, all these things are coming simply from not being hydrated. So again, like I said in the beginning, these are all very simple principles. You know, this says read food labels, look at portion sizes, look at calories, be aware low fat and non-fat does not necessarily mean low calorie. And what that's saying is, you know, there was studies that came out by Dr. Esselstein, Dr. T. Colin Campbell showing that heart disease and cancer were coming from a high fat, high calorie diet. High fat and high calorie basically means eating animals. So they did what's called the nurses study, this massive study with all these nurses across the United States. And they followed them for a 15 year period. And they put them on a low fat diet. After 15 years, the statistics were the same. And so they said, oh, that proves that low fat is bullshit. The problem was these people are eating low fat, still eating the same diet. They're eating crap food that's supposedly low fat, eating yogurts that are low fat, drinking low fat milk. When in fact, if you look at milk, low-fat milk is still 30% fat. Even though it says low-fat, it's still up to 30% based on calories coming from fat. So, anyways, eat smaller portions. When eating high-calorie food, what is high-calorie food? It's animals. Low-calorie food is every plant. Every fruit, every vegetable pretty much is low-calorie. Bar maybe a few of them. 
It says choose vegetables, whole fruits, legumes, peas and beans, uh, low calorie foods. So, you know, a lot of people bring up the question, well, what about protein? And essentially, uh, the protein myth is a great myth. It's an awesome thing for the Beef and Dairy Association um, because they're a multi-billion dollar conglomerate. And so, they if I eat apples, you know, the same size, if I eat two apples, the same size as that steak, it might only have 150 to 250 calories, whereas the steak had 1,200. So when they go measure the protein in meat and put one cup, they can say, look, it has all the essential amino acids and protein and everything you need in that one cup. If you take one cup of strawberries, it doesn't. It's highly lacking. And so they say, you can't get it from strawberries. You know what I'm saying? But I'll show you the scientific study that was done that shows if you take the same caloric intake of strawberries, 1,200 calories meat, 1,200 calories of strawberries, you get more than the possible requirement of all the essential amino acids. Absolutely. Natural sugar is great for you. I eat more sugar than... Most people you know, and I can run a marathon, I can do a lot of things. You look at my organs, you look at my blood, it's clean. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about sugar and let's talk about fat. Okay. Now, just on a natural basis, okay, let's pretend you don't know anything. We're a bunch of dumb humans running around, don't know, don't know what we're doing. What are we going to eat? Here we are in Bali. Let's go for a walk. What are we going to eat? Oh my God, I'm hungry. What do I eat? What? Yeah, what's available? A coconut. Does coconut have a lot of sugar in that water? It has quite a bit. What else would we eat? Come on, guys. Bananas. bananas. Thank you very much. Does bananas have a lot of sugar? Absolutely. Do you think bananas are meant for humans? Absolutely. If you were hungry, would you eat bananas? Absolutely. How many would you eat? Simple question. How many would you eat? If you were hungry and you're dumb and you're walking around and you're starving and you find a banana tree, how many bananas are you going to eat? Fifteen. Thank you. Give this man a round of applause. Absolutely. Does a monkey, does a monkey curb the amount of bananas it eats because it's like, oh my God, there's sugar in that. Does a monkey have diabetes? Does a monkey, is a monkey the most similar thing to a human than any other planet, any other animal on the planet? Absolutely. Chimpanzees. First heart transplant ever performed was a chimpanzee's heart into a human, and it worked. Anatomically, we are very similar to monkeys. If you take a, a thing of bananas to the monkey forest, it will take them all, and it will eat them all. But we humans have this interesting thing where we've been programmed by media and by naturopaths and doctors that sugar is bad for you. I agree a thousand percent. If you grow sugar cane, burn it, harvest it, highly process it down to a white powder that is highly acidic, it's poison. So yes, sugar is bad for you. When it comes to fructose, in a, a plant, whether it be a papaya, a banana, a mango, or any of these other fruits, what is that sugar? Where did it come from? Any ideas? Fructose is literally crystallized sun energy. Our body is an electrical being. We're electrical beings. When we breathe in air, we're getting electricity. When I go out in the sun, I'm receiving electricity through solar panels. And when I eat foods, the more electrically charged those things are, the more energy I'm going to have. Now think about it. Is the dirt sweet? Yes or no? Probably not. I ate some when I was a kid. It wasn't very sweet. And I think if we went out there and ate and chewed on some, it wouldn't be very sweet. So there's no sugar in the soil. Now, is there sugar in water? Yes or no? Come on, play along, guys. Is there sugar in water? No, there's no sugar in water. So we have this little intelligent being called a seed that grows into a plant. How the hell did a mango become highly sweet? Well, it's got these leaves that it holds out, 
and it gathers sunlight. And that sunlight transforms through a process of photosynthesis, which is similar to our blood, and it changes it into things that we need. We live in a symbiosis with plants. When I breathe out, the plant breathes in. When the plant breathes out, I breathe in. You can take three large plants into a sealed container and literally breathe indefinitely. So there's a symbiosis. When I go pee pee on the plant, it feeds it. Then the plant grows and it delivers fruit and I eat it. We're living in conjunction with one another, right? We only need plants, they only need us. Or some form of animals, some form of CO2. Am I making sense? Absolutely not. You don't have to. No, you don't have to. Unless you eat a lot of fat. And then you're in trouble. Why? Because when we eat animals, when we eat fat, that fat accumulates in the circulatory system. So if you can imagine I have a circulatory system, and this is blood flowing through here. The more hydrated I am, the more blood volume I have, which is really good. Now, if I consume too much fat, meaning my bile from my liver can't really break it all down, it comes into my lymphatic system, it uploads into the blood, and it starts to accumulate as plaque. Now, fat is an insulator. Now, fat's a good thing. Our body can make fat. It's actually a good thing to have. It's stored energy. Insulation. Am I making sense? If all of a sudden I said, oh, you can only drink water, you're going to be on a fast, depending on how much fat you have is how long you're going to be able to go. Your body will break that down and convert it into sugar to feed all of your cells. Your brain runs on sugar, your cells, your muscles, everything runs on sugars. Okay, and it has a process of converting things. So when I eat too much fat, I get a coating. If you can imagine if I took oil and just poured it through my blood, that would coat my arteries. Now what happens is if I'm walking along and I'm a healthy human being and I eat a banana, I eat 10 bananas, the sugar uploads into my bloodstream immediately and goes to all of my muscles, to my brain, to my liver, and stores it and uses it. I have energy. Look at a monkey. Eats 15 bananas, and then it's swinging from freaking trees. It's using the energy. It's healthy. It's alive, right? So this is what we want. We want to be healthy. We want to be alive. We want to have energy. But as soon as we add too much fat, I'm not saying fat is bad. Fat is actually really good. But as soon as you have too much, it uploads into the bloodstream and coats it. So now I eat, let's say, a banana or five bananas. The sugar uploads into my blood, it travels, it wants to go into my cells, and what happens? It can't. It's stuck. You take a, a piece of white bread, pour water onto it, what happens? It goes right through. You put a slab of butter on there, nice and thick, pour water, what happens? It can't go through. The fats that upload into our blood take 24 to 48 hours to emulsify and for our body to get rid of it. But what happens? People eat fat every day. So they constantly have this thick coating of fats. The body's dealing with it. It's processing it. But they get to a point to where when they're eating too much sugar from fruit, they're having problems. This can lead to blindness. It can lead to diabetes. It can lead to excess weight. It can lead to a plethora of symptoms and other problems. So the cause is the fat but we like to associate with the immediate reaction. We eat fruit, oh my God, you know, spike of energy, feeling like crap, insulin's being produced because it can't go through the cellular wall. Insulin forces it through there. After insulin's been produced for too long, you develop diabetes. Then you have adrenal glands, which are overworked because the adrenal glands do the same thing. So you have adrenal fatigue, you have diabetic situations, hypo and hyperglycemic. You have all these things that are coming from this process of just the fact that we're eating too much fat in our diet. And if we ate a plant-based diet, we weren't eating near the amount of meat. If we radically reduced it and had a small portion, maybe for dinner, protein, I don't believe, should ever be eaten except for at dinner time. And I prefer plant-based proteins, lentils, beans, peas, all kinds of things. Um, you know, good question. So I am a naturalist in the sense that, like I said, I'm just a big dumb human walking around. Now, as a big dumb human walking around, you know, when I see the bunny rabbit out there, I don't salivate. Oh my God, it's a rabbit. I don't feel like running over there and snapping its neck and pulling its spine out and putting it on a fire and cooking it, right? But what I might notice as a big dumb human being walking around 
is that chickens are running around and laying eggs. And there might be a lot of eggs. And I might notice that not all those eggs become chickens. And in fact, there's snakes that come along and eat them. There's birds that come along and eat them. It's a source of food. Does that make sense? So I might actually see that there's extra eggs, and I'll sneak over there and pop one out. And it's a high source of nutrition um, that I can cook, that I can eat raw, and essentially get a lot of calories from. Am I making sense? So naturally, I wouldn't want to expend a lot of energy personally to try to go kill an animal, animal to consume it. But if I found a food source that was easy, then I might do it. Now, you know, a lot of people would argue all kinds of different things when it comes to eggs, when it comes to dairy products and things like that. It comes down to you and, and what you're willing to do. Yeah. Like I said, within 24 to 48 hours, our body naturally emulsifies it. This is why people with cardiac issues, Dr. Esselstyn, he says, immediately go on a plant-based diet. And the patients, he won't work with a patient who, unless they're 100% dedicated. He says, you don't realize that even if you cheat once, once you've had a heart attack, once you're having a stroke or these issues, you could cheat once, just like, oh, you know, on the weekend, I'm just gonna go out and have one steak you could actually cause an event from that. So he says as soon as you stop, you reduce the amount of fat that you're getting, the amount of cholesterol, which is a plant-based diet, it's gone. 48 hours, the amount of fat in your bloodstream has lowered. Now you can eat more fruit. Now you can eat more vegetables. And that's it. If I had a heart attack or a stroke, mm -hmm. I'd be completely vegan. I'm not vegan. I do eat eggs occasionally. I do have butter. I think they're great. Um, but I also am aware of how much I'm eating, if that makes sense. Not in your belly, it's so sweet. What is? Butter. Butter. Uh. They do have, they do have uh, imported good, like, grass-fed butter. You just got to go to the right place for it. So do you eat meat? No. No, I haven't eaten an animal for... Maybe 14 years, including fish. So I get good. I get my good fats, omegas from flaxseed, chia seeds, everything plant-based. That makes sense. That's not what I'm here to recommend, though. I'm here to recommend eat more plants. And if you like meat, great. Just be aware of how much you're eating. Our body has the capacity to break it down. We have bile. We can break down fats. But you know, if you're getting too much, and the thing about you know, for me, it's like. I'm an addictive personality. If I'm smoking cigarettes, I have to quit smoking completely and be done. I couldn't like reduce the amount of cigarettes I'm smoking because it wouldn't work. So for a meat eater, if I was just like, oh, okay, well, I'm just gonna have a little bit of chicken here, a little bit of fish over here, bullshit. I'd be eating it every night and saying, oh yeah, I just eat it occasionally. <laughs> Who am I kidding? So if I quit completely and I know I can and I have all the science, all the research and stuff to know, I can eat a plant-based diet and be healthy and feel fantastic, why wouldn't I? But what I'm here to recommend for you guys is to simply reduce the amount, eat more fresh fruits and vegetables and you'll feel a lot better. And if you're that type of person where you get to the point that it's like, uh, I really need to make some changes, then you might consider that for yourself. So I got this whole presentation, but I love just going off on tangents, as you can tell. Um, this is the American Cancer Society. This is what they say about radiation therapy. I don't want to read through it all, but it basically says that radiation causes cancer. We know that, right? You, you go to Fukushima and you'll get cancer. If you go get radiation in the form of x-rays, in the form of any other radiation therapy, it develops cancer. Uh, the highest cause of leukemia on the planet is chemotherapy. And they say it right on their website. American Cancer Society, leading cause of leukemia is chemo. Chemotherapy is known to cause all different forms of cancer. So, you know, my question is, why are we giving people with cancer these forms of radiation and chemotherapy? Well, that's what they have access to. Does it work? Potentially. Potentially. D drastic, you know, things call for drastic measures. Um, but, you know, I would be really careful, you know, especially because a lot of people that are diagnosed with cancer, just because you found out that you have it doesn't mean it's like this emergency chemo situation if you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of perfectly healthy looking people with cancer. And if they simply identify, oh, I've got cancer, I really need to get smart 
and change my life, maybe do some fasting, some purification, whole food plant-based, which reverses the promotion of cancer, then I'll be good. Uh, this got Dr. Neil Bernard, lead uh, physician's committee, responsible medicine. He's actually written a book called The Cancer Survivor Guide. If you type Cancer Survivor Guide PDF into Google, it's a free downloaded book. And he pretty much will give you all the information of clients he's worked with with terminal cancer, being able to reverse it on a whole food plant-based diet. And these guys, you know, they're still medical doctors. They're still like, look, there's a place for chemo, there's a place for radiation, but this is what we're finding now that we're taking people off of that stuff and putting them on plant-based whole foods. You guys heard of Hippocrates? He's one of the original physicians. He laid the foundation for modern medicine. He went to Egypt and studied there three to seven years, not exactly sure of the exact time, and became a basic physician. He learned how to diagnose disease by looking at a person's face. I've had all this training. I can look at a person's face. I can see if they have reproductive issues, if they have stomach problems. I can see if they have heart issues, if they have digestive problems. I can see if they have liver issues. I can see everything, the lungs, uh, whether you have acne, big pores, lines, deep grooves, all kinds of things. These are all signs of the internal organs of our body. So if my liver is weak, um, I'll have signs in certain places. If I have reproductive problems, I might get acne or I might have a deep line in my chin. There's different things that show up on different parts of the plate, on the face. So he was taught in a very specific tradition that when a, a patient walked into the room, he could tell what kind of problems they had by the way they walked, the way they held themselves, the sound of their voice, and by looking at their face. He would already know, oh, this person's got some major digestive issues, the pancreas is having some problems, and etc., etc. Then he would look into their eyes, he'd look at the whites of the eyes, be able to identify the main stresses of the body. This is called sclerology. So now there's a whole science around sclerology. There's documents from ancient China that have all the same records as what we have today based on a new science. Go all the way back to Egypt, same thing. So these people thousands of years ago had this stuff documented. And doctors and scientists just in the last 60, 70 years have rediscovered this and made a whole science out of iridology and sclerology. And you can identify stress, diagnose essentially disease, parasites, lymphatic situation, everything that's happening in your body simply by looking in, into your eyes and onto your face. So I do consultations. Essentially, I take a photo of your eyes, photo of your face, your tongue, your nails, and look at everything on your body and assess essentially if you're having issues, what those issues specifically are. And then there's essentially whole foods and you know specific things that can essentially clear those up. So that's a little bit about Hippocrates. Um, I'm gonna quickly run through just because I know, you know eventually you guys are gonna want some food here. Uh, I just wanna run through some basics. Is that all right with you guys? And this is the stuff that my dad learned when he was traveling around to these different societies and cultures. He realized there's some basic principles that if we observe these things, essentially we'll live happier and healthier. Number one is air. Essentially, we are air-breathing beings. The lungs is the largest organ inside the body. So take a deep breath in. Let it out. Deep breath in, play along. Let it out. One more time, deep breath in. Let it out. Anybody feel dizzy, like you're going to pass out? That's because toxins are now circulating. When you take a deep breath, essentially you're pushing your diaphragm and causing your lymphatic system to move. Lymphatic system have, has five times more fluid than your blood. How much? Five times more fluid than blood in the body. It's quite important. Now your heart and the electrical signals through your body create a pulsation to constantly pump your blood. Well, your lymphatic system is used for taking out the garbage, and it doesn't have a pump. So the way you pump it, either running, exercising, breathing deeply. When someone's running, right? Plus, they got their arms pumping and their legs pumping, and they're sweating. Best thing you can do to eliminate toxicity is sweat and exercise. Now, you can essentially run a marathon without actually doing anything. And the way you do it is sit down. Take a deep breath in through the nose, into the belly. Fill the lungs to the top, and then let it out. 
And what that's doing is that's pushing the diaphragm and it's causing all that fluid in your body to pump. So I have this program called Seven Rounds of Seven. You simply download it onto your phone. You can record it yourself. You breathe in for seven seconds, hold for seven seconds, out for seven seconds, hold for seven seconds, and you do that seven times. It takes about four minutes. What's that? Excellent. With my voice. <laughs> Essentially, so let's say I breathe in, right? I'm breathing in oxygen, I'm breathing in all kinds of gases. When I hold it, each time my heart pumps, it's gathering that oxygen. Does that make sense? Okay, my lungs are this huge bag. Now pretend that huge bag is full of oxygen, okay? When my heart pumps, it takes a little bit. And then it pumps again, it takes a little bit more. And then it pumps again, it takes a little bit more. As it's taking, it's also dumping in toxic acid. Through natural cellular respiration, our body produces acid. We are alkaline by nature and acidic by function. Which means when I eat foods and my body goes through a process called ATP for cellular production of energy, the byproduct is acid. So when I go pee, it's acid coming out. When I breathe, acid comes out, alkaline comes in. If you can measure oxygen, if I oxygenate water and then test the alkalinity, it's a higher alkaline point. Okay? Now, I have a machine at home. It costs $2,000. I can run water through it. It's called an ionizer. And I can create high alkaline or high acid water. So if I create a high alkaline, let's say 12 alkaline water, I've got these little drops I can put in it. And if it's alkaline, it's blue. If it's high alkaline, it's purple. If it's acid, it's yellow. If it's high acid, it's red. You following me? So I can produce high alkaline water that's purple in a glass, and I can see that it's purple. I put the drops in there. I can take a deep breath and take a straw and blow bubbles into it. I bubble two breaths, and it's gone from a high alkaline down to a high acid. That makes sense? A good visual presentation that every time we exhale, we're getting rid of acid. The accumulation of acid is essentially the basis for all disease. And this is where the whole acid-alkaline balance comes in. You guys heard of the alkaline diet and all this type of stuff. It's just one component of health, but it's, it's a valid point. Tumors exist in an acid condition, and they metabolize through what's called fermentation of sugars. Now, a lot of people believe that fruits feed cancer, but that can be further from the truth. Because when you eat fruits, you alkalize the body, you add electricity, antioxidants, and all these beautiful things. You have to have an acidic condition of fermentation to feed tumors. What creates an acidic condition in the body? Eating processed foods, eating dead animals, eating anything that's artificial. Does that make sense? Once you cook and highly process, you create acid. So essentially, if we were these, you know, kind of dumb beings running around, didn't know what we were doing, we'd actually be better off because we'd probably drink coconut water, which is highly alkalizing and feeds our cells. We'd eat the coconut meat, which is good fats, feeds the cells. We'd be eating papaya, bananas, greens. All of these things are alkaline. In fact, I run this seven-day juice fast. I used to run it here. And in one of the program, what part of the program, we would have a big tray. We'd have a piece, big piece of chicken, big piece of meat, big piece of fish. We'd have banana, we'd have almonds, we'd have cashews, we'd have all these different plants. We'd all put on these glasses, goggles, and go out with these big torches. And we'd sit out there with torches and we'd melt everything down to its ash. Now the leftover ash content of a food will either create an acidic condition in the body or an alkaline condition. So we'd get a glass of water, we'd measure the pH, and let's say the pH was 7. If we burned down the chicken and put the ashes in there and then measured it, it would be like a 5. That makes sense? Which means it's acid. Then if I melt down bananas, which is a 9, I'd put it into there and it'd be a 9. So essentially we want to be more alkaline because the natural functioning of the body creates acid. So if we're eating foods that are creating more acid on top of that, what do you have? Disease of all kinds. So breathing. And what kind of air are we breathing is a good point as well. You know, people smoking cigarettes in the house, if you're painting your walls with trichloroethylene, 
If you put in brand new furniture, it has what's called formaldehyde as a preservative on the furniture. There's things that we can do to eliminate that stuff. But essentially, the best house cleaners on the planet are these, which I'm stoked to see that you guys actually have plants in the room because just a few plants will produce quite a bit of oxygen. So what I recommend in my baby's room, in our room, everywhere in the house that actually closes up, the nice thing about Bali is most of it's open, but I have these plants specifically. This is the areca palm. Sorry, areca palm here. These are peace lilies, and that's the money plant. And studies have been done where they put trichloroethylene, formaldehyde, um, and some other gas into a chamber. And then what they did is they tried different plants, putting it in to see if any of them would release uh, the toxins. And they found these three plants were the best. Within a 24-hour period, they eliminated 95% of formaldehyde, trichloroethylene, and all these other things. And three adult-sized plants can sustain one human. This one is the peace lilies. These are my favorite. Yeah, beautiful. Because they'll like fall over and look like they're dying, and it just means they're thirsty. You pour water on them, they come back on like a couple hours, like, woohoo, look at me. Uh, the reason I put onions on there is because you can actually put onions in a room that has chemicals, and it'll actually pull the chemicals into the onion. And then you want to throw it away afterwards. Some people put them on the bottom of their feet and put them in a sock to pull toxins out of the body. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with them. And they would say that people that are sick, you put an onion in a, in a, like a bowl of water, put it in a sick person's room, and it'll pull a lot of that sickness out. Garlic and onions are absolutely fantastic when it comes to the elimination of bacteria, um, viruses, and things of that nature. Water. Uh, do I really need to say it? We want to avoid chlorine. You want to avoid fluoride. Studies show that it causes cancer growth, one part per million, fluoride. Um, chlorine leads to asthma, leads to eczema, all kinds of skin conditions. You don't want to be showering in it because the gases come off and can create lung conditions. Um, ultimately, you want to avoid it as much as possible. Yes, I'm going to still swim in a pool that has chlorine in it, but I'm not going to drink it. This is Dr. Masuru Emoto I was talking about earlier. He's written a book called The Hidden Messages in Water and found that your actual intentions affect the water. So you can take distilled water, which looks like this, and simply by saying thank you, when you freeze it, it takes on this type of structure. I'm not really going to get into this too much because I don't have a lot of time, but essentially our words affect things. And there's an experiment you can do at home. I did this myself. You cook rice, white rice, put it into three different jars, and you can label one sick, one is neutral, and one like, healthy, happy, thank you, whatever. I put mine into different rooms. I only did two, to be honest. I did the, the sick one and the healthy one. So it's just white rice in two different jars. Same exact thing. I put one in one bathroom, one in another. Every day for 30 days, I woke up, went into one. I said, you're disgusting. I hate you. To one of them. And then I went over to this one. I said, I love you. You're beautiful. You smell good. And I was literally like putting my energy into it. Within five days, this one was turning black like little bits of black and mold. This one, the same. 10 days, this one's disgusting. This one's the same. 30 days, you couldn't even recognize what this was. Took the lid off. Shocking. Yep, cooked white rice. You can just put, you don't even have to cook it. You can just put it in water and put it in a jar and watch what happens. But essentially, you're supposed to just cook it, put it in two different jars. And I saw it on YouTube. I saw they did it at schools and different places as a cool little experiment. But I don't believe anything until I do it myself. So after I did it myself, it really made a huge impact because what you realize is the words we're saying to each other, I love you, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're really awesome, you know, fit-looking guy, let's hang out. When we're saying positive things to each other, we're actually structuring the water content and creating health. Uh, Dr. Emoto actually put water from structured, just by talking to it, onto DNA and shows that it strengthens DNA. And then you can say, like, I hate you to a glass of water and put it on DNA and it unravels. And I've had a lot of other experiments I've done that's confirmed this process that our intention, our words, and everything is really powerful. But essentially, it's the water. You know, we need to be drinking more water. We need to be hydrated. Um, I would recommend drinking one liter of water per 22 kgs of body weight, 
per day unless you're optimal health or eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. Because we can also hydrate our bodies through eating fresh fruits and vegetables. But three liters of fluid for an average person, I weigh about 80 kgs, so I, I drink about four liters of fluids a day. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? This one, yeah, I know, huh? I don't have much time to do it. I've been talking too much. One medium-sized carrot eaten every day improves blood flow to your eyes by 35%. Yep, yeah, just raw carrot. You can also get the vitamin A from cooked carrots, though, too. I do recommend raw carrots, but you can get them either way. According to science, it's the same thing. You might lose a little bit of the content, just eat a little bit more. Yeah. I just eat a carrot right out of the garden with the dirt still on it. Vitamin B12. Um, and that's how we used to get B12, by the way. We just pull stuff out of the garden and eat it. And that's where you get a high source of B12. Um, so there you have it. I have clients, literally, that have taken off their glasses, eaten carrots, drinking carrot juice, and do eye exercises every day until their eyesight improves. And a lot of people believe the eyes can't improve, and that's bullshit. The eyes are organs just like anything else. I've had people with thick glasses come back to actually seeing and not using glasses. Um, there was, t in 2006, I helped my dad write a book. I spent nine months on a computer doing Adobe Photoshop and putting all of this book together. And at the end of nine months, I was literally like blind. I, I was just like, had to squint at everything. Everything was blurry. And traditionally, a person would be like, oh, I need glasses. I was like, no, I'll screw that. I need to eat some carrots, do some eye exercises. I started doing very specific eye exercises back and forth every single day. Only like five minutes a day, but I did it in 2020 vision. So it doesn't matter where you're at. You can definitely improve your eyesight. Walnuts. Grows in the heavens, in the trees. It has a husk, got a hard shell. You crack it open, left hemisphere, right hemisphere. Looks like convoluted dritic folds on top. Looks like the corpus callosum exactly. If you break it in half, looks just like the corpus callosum. Baylor University in the United States did a study of walnuts and found it has the perfect ratio of omega fats that cross the blood-brain barrier, unlike fish oil. Fish oil will not cross the blood-brain barrier for a couple of reasons that I won't get into right now. Um, but perfect brain food. Leonardo da Vinci used to draw paintings of, of the brain and walnuts as well. Look at an avocado. Shaped like womb and cervix, just like a female that's pregnant. Um, the best fats for a woman to put on good fat. Studies have been done if you eat a medium-sized avocado on a daily basis because your body's getting good fats. It starts to shed unwanted bad fat. Uh, prevents cervical cancer, according to other studies that have been done. So pretty awesome stuff. Good for males as well. Look at a tomato. It's got four chambers. It's red. It's the size of your heart. Lycopene has been the number one study from the American Heart Association for its properties dealing with the heart. There's also capsicum. You got yellow, green, red capsicum. Same thing. Four chambers. The seeds um, rebuilding the heart, essentially. Celery, shaped like the bones, looks like bones. 21% sodium. Bones, 21% sodium. If you want to prevent osteoporosis, if you want to have strong bones, eat celery. There's things like watermelon. We call this using the melon. It's 93% water, brain, 93% water. The fluids inside of watermelon have been tested and matched what's called hydronium. So when you eat watermelon, you actually have a higher level of functioning capacity of the brain. So a lot of times when I do presentations, I'll eat a bunch of watermelon before I get up and speak because my brain's on fire at that point. And there's a lot of others. Essentially, the reason to eat whole foods is because it's highly electrical. There's Carillion photography where you can literally take a photograph of different foods and see the electrical energy that's available. And essentially, it's that electrical energy that runs us. So if you want to have energy, if you want to have great ideas, if you want to build, in my opinion, a successful business, um, a level of health is, is needed for that. And now I want to talk a little bit about fasting. Anybody in here ever done a fast? Awesome. Excellent. So a little bit of experience. The word fast comes from the Middle English word fasten, which means to hold, strengthen, observe, or to abstain from food. First records of human fasting for the remedy of disease go back to ancient civilizations of Greece and Egypt. Hippocrates prescribed fasting during critical periods of disease. All throughout human history, we've had to fast. 
If you look at animals in nature, they eat and they fast, and they eat and they fast. You know, an animal that's a carnivore may eat and then have this period of time where it doesn't find food and fast. Same with humans, same with a lot of other animals, uh, except for, you know, maybe cows that are put on a pasture and have food all the time. Uh, every mammal on the planet that's wild, if it gets injured or it gets sick, will naturally do a fast. And depending on how injured or how sick they are, they'll fast for an extended period of time. When you fast, everything heals faster. And the reason for that is when you eat food, it requires a lot of energy to digest that food. So when you free that energy from digestion, it can go into the process of healing and detoxification. Uh, and I got this guy at the end because I think we lost track of fasting. Um, just a little bit of history. Moses, Christ, Gandhi, Pythagoras. These guys were known to fast for extended periods of 40 days. Plato, Socrates, Aristotle. These guys were known to fast 10 days at a time, it says, to gain mental and physical efficiency. You'll never know what that means until you actually do it. A 10-day water fast, um, which I would recommend doing a juice fast first. I have a 7-day online juice fast with recipes, information, exercises, breathing exercises, downloads, online community of over 3,000 people that have done it, and it's completely free. So there's no reason not to do it. It's tylertolman.com. You go under cleanses, online juice fast. You sign up for it. You get emails every day. It's got videos you watch each day, information, recipes, and a ton of stuff. I used to sell it for $500 just for people to go through it, and eventually we're like, let's just give it away. So I highly recommend doing that juice fast first and look if you say cool I'm gonna try a juice fast for seven days and you make it half a day congratulations because even if you just drink a bunch of juice for half a day you're gonna be you know doing some good things if you make it two days and then you break great congratulations you did two days and then each time you do it you'll notice that the detoxification symptoms are a lot less some people you jump on a juice fast right now you feel great you could go 7, 10, 20 days. Other people, day two, you're going to die. So, you know, eat some food, get back onto it, and try it again later. But eventually, you will all get to a point of being able to do seven days and feel really good just drinking fresh squeezed juices. Yada, yada, yada. Essenes, yada, yada. This guy, yada, yada. Um, current medical uh, scientific breakthroughs are now coming out. Um, about fasting, specifically there's a University of Wisconsin, University of Chicago called Whole Biological Laboratories, where there's specific doctors now actually facilitating fasting and, and doing studies on cats and dogs, mice and rats and humans. And these guys have put out a documentary, one of them on intermittent fasting called Eat Fast and Live Longer. Write it down. Eat Fast and Live Longer. Amazing documentary. And this guy's going around interviewing the doctors and scientists and finding out that fasting improves intelligence. They can literally hook you up to a, a CEG machine and watch your brain light up. Every day of a fast, more neurons start firing. And they say, oh, well, if, you know, if you're in nature and didn't have access to food, you'd have to become more intelligent to find food. That's their description for it. I have quite a different one. Um, but all, you know, throughout time in every major religion as well, fasting has always been a part of every religion for more of a connection. They call it a divine connection. But rejuvenescence. There is one quality of fasting which is genuinely awesome and even miraculous and yet truly natural to life. This is the ability of living things, including humans, to regain youthfulness. This physiological scientific method is called rejuvenescence. So they've actually coined this phrase for all of the qualities that are coming from fasting. At the Department of Physiology at the University of Chicago, Dr. Carlson and Professor Kuhn fast, fasted a 40-year-old male two weeks, discovering his cellular physiology was that of a 17-year-old. I had one of Gandhi on here at the age of 64, did a fast, on day 10 was examined by physicians and found to have the internal health of a 30 or 40-year-old. Now, what's happening when you do a fast? Old age is characterized by a slowing down of the metabolic rate. So we all have a homeostatic metabolism. 
Like you can affect metabolism by exercising or by eating foods or doing things, but we all have a base rate metabolism. That base rate metabolism starts to decrease when we hit about 30 to 35 years of age. But it might only be like 1% every couple of years. But that 1% every couple of years within 20, 30, 40 years really starts to take a toll on your DNA, especially what's called the telomeres, which are these little ports that help us to regenerate at the end of our DNA strands. This decrease may be permanently increased by the process of fasting according to experiments conducted at the whole biological laboratory at the University of Chicago. These experiments were conducted on both dogs and humans for extended periods of time. The results observed were that in fasts of 30 to 40 days, a 5 to 6% increase in the metabolic rate was observed. Now, it might not sound significant, but it's massive. Because if you can equate every two or three or four years to 1% of a drop in metabolic rate, by raising that 6%, you're potentially taking 15 to 20 years reversing. Now, I've been working with people for the last five years, big retreats, seven days, and I also have a retreat called Heal Thyself, which is a 30-day fasting program. I've facilitated people through 40-day water fasts, which is full on and all kinds of juice fasts, 21-day water fasts, and I'll give you a little bit more info on some of those people coming up. Um, but essentially, what I'm getting at is because our faces are directly related to the internal environment of our organs, when we do a fast, I'm not going to describe the whole process, but through a breaking down of fat at a fast rate, our body releases what's called stem cells. You guys heard of stem cells before? So stem cell technology is a technology of taking embryonic stem cells out of embryos, injecting them into a human, which requires them to lower your immune system so you don't fight it. And if your body takes the stem cells, it will literally replace damaged and dead tissue inside the body, which means if your heart is damaged, like you've had a heart attack, or it's actually damaged, your, your body can regenerate because those stem cells can be used for anything. Is that making sense? So let's pretend you have damaged kidneys. You've been eating a lot of protein, your blood's acidic, you got kidney stones. The eyes show the state of the kidneys. So if somebody's got dark bags under their eyes, they've got these deep lines under their eyes. If they got puffy eyes, they've got different types of eyes going on. It's the direct relation of your kidneys. Well, if I give you stem cell technology and it heals your kidneys, your eyes will literally clear up. The darkness will go away, the lines will go away. And I've seen this in person with people that are 50, 60, 70 years old coming to my program who 30 days later leave and look 15 years younger. They go home, every person that's come to my program, they go home and people look at them and like, what the hell did you do? You went to Bali and had plastic surgery, didn't you? You had stem cell technology, didn't you? No, I did a fast. So I'm, what I'm sharing with you guys is amazing. It's absolutely phenomenal. I'm not even going to get into this process. There's something called autolysis of tumors. When you fast, your body actually breaks down tumors to use the protein for the metabolic function of the body. Which means if somebody has cancer and they have tumors and they do a fast, it basically eats the tumor so that you can survive. This is Dr. Robert Young. He spent about 30 years researching juice fasting specifically and says specifically that your body develops embryonic stem cells when you drink alkaline fluids on a juice fast. That was the thing of Gandhi I was talking about. Here's some reasons why to fast, lose fat, reduce risk of disease, mental clarity, eliminate parasites, rebuild your glands, clean your organs, repair your digestive system. I've had people with Crohn's disease, IBS, many other irritable bowel problems that have absolutely cured themselves, which supposedly is impossible, especially with Crohn's. Uh, reset your taste buds, break addictions, create new habits, spiritual growth, self-reflection, know thyself. Temetnoski, it's know thyself. So the pr true process, like I'm talking all physical level here. There's a whole other level I believe we're here and we exist for a reason. And fasting really gets us in tune with what that purpose is. This is Matt Catling. He's diagnosed basically with heart disease at a young age. He owns a business called the Institute of Behavioral Sciences in Sydney. He's in the highest building right on Manly Beach. Fairly wealthy, amazing individual. 
uh, went to the leading cardiologist in Australia, which wanted to put him on drugs and potentially do surgery. And he said, no, I'm going to go see this guy for 30 days. Cardiologist said, well, it's not going to make any difference. Basically, he said, I have 160 over 110 was his blood pressure. He came to my program, lost 20 kgs in 30 days. He did a 21-day water fast. Okay. His blood pressure is now 120 over 81, the way it should be, uh, and he's living a healthier lifestyle in Manly. And he'll never have to deal with those issues. This is Damien. His wife, Tanil, contacted me saying, my, my husband's been diagnosed with a rare brain tumor that's three and a half centimeters. It's in a place in his brain where they cannot operate because it would kill him. Anything you think we can do? I said, why don't you come to Bali and do some fasting because of this thing called autolysis of tumors. It just might shrink it. I don't know. Give it a try. He shrunk it by 86%. He did a 10-day water. He did seven days of juice, 10 days of water, ate food again for a few days, and then did a five-day water fast and was like, I'm done. I'm cancer-free. And he was glowing. And he went home. His family didn't believe him. He's like, I'm cancer-free. I don't need to prove it to anybody. I don't care what you think. But eventually he went in and got tested and had an 86% reduction in his tumor, which since then he's continued fasting and hopefully it's completely gone. He actually lives here in Bali. Him and his wife moved from Melbourne to Bali. This is Danner, awesome guy. His wife, Kate, and him came. He lives in, uh, I think, Mackay, or one of the mining towns up north. He was actually one of the head guys over all the miners. Big bikey, tattoos, big beard, huge pot belly, hardcore mofo. Not anymore. He went back home. And went to work and was hugging his employees saying, I love you and thank you so much for being in my life. We actually had other people come from that same mind that came to our program because of him. Just because they saw the changes in him. Um, so he had, uh, I think, stage 3 or stage 4 liver cancer. He had colon cancer, tumors in his colon. He did chemotherapy to try to kill it and that's what caused liver cancer. He was in a really bad state. As you can see, he's got two beautiful children. And he told me he didn't want to die. He's like, I don't know what I got to do, but I don't want to die. And I said, look, man, yada, 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 fasting, 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 come out and give it a try. And he was a freaking soldier. 21 days on a water fast, got off of it on juices, changed his diet and lifestyle, went home, then went and did his own like 40-day juice fast. 40 days on juices while he was working in the mines still, taking his juice, juicing every single day. <laughs> Hardcore. 100% cancer free. 100%. Blood tests, every analysis, every check. Nearly stage 4 liver cancer and colon cancer completely healed. Shocking. You guys have seen the big ice bucket challenge, ALS? Before ever that even started, this woman came out with motor neurons disease, ALS. Had a really tough time walking. She could probably walk from about here to that door. And her speech was going. Doctors told her to go home and eat anything and everything you want because it will slow down the process. Eat ice cream, eat hamburgers, eat whatever you want. That's what you need to do with motor neurons. She didn't buy that. She gave me a call and she came out to my program with her son and daughter. We bought her this wheelchair just so we could push her to the beach and back. I'm doing a juice fast. She was pushing me in the wheelchair fully speaking clearly, shocking. And she was there for 30 days. Uh, about eight months later, I went to, uh, where is it, Geraldton? You guys know Geraldton? So that's where they live. I went to Geraldton and their little family had like 200 people in a room sitting there waiting for me to give a presentation because they knew this woman. And they watched her go from nearly dying to like all of a sudden happy and healthy again. And I'm not saying she's cured of ALS, but she's improved drastically. And I believe if she continues with the lifestyle, she'll live out a long, healthy, happy life. Without reading this, uh, this is basically Joanna. She basically contracted Lyme's disease, a neurological form. Um, within two years, she got to a point of not being able to work, not being able to leave the house. It's a degenerative form where you're in pain. Sometimes you can only talk for a little while and you can't even talk anymore. She's basically bedridden. Every once in a while she'd go to the grocery store with her mom and back. And look at, look at this girl. 
had Lyme's disease, had a tough time leaving her house, and she built up the strength to come to Bali on an airplane, one of the most fearful things she's ever done, and she did a water fast. She did 21 days on water, 100% cured from Lyme's disease. She actually works with us now, helps us with the programs, tons of energy, beautiful young girl, amazing. Summer Norton, she's our uh, customer service girl. If you ever email office at Conscious Lifestyler, this is her. Uh, she couldn't have children due to polycystic ovaries. Did a short fast, 21 days on Kabbalah juice, which is what you're drinking here, and healed polycystic ovarian syndrome. And she actually got pregnant during the juice fast. Shocking. So essentially, you know, I believe there isn't a disease on the planet that can't be healed. Now the problem is, if you don't have a disease, you might not have a lot of motivation. You know what I mean? People that have cancer, Lyme's disease, diabetes, heart disease, they have a lot of motivation to spend money and to actually do what it takes to heal themselves. When a lot of times when we just, you know, don't have that motivation, we kind of just hear one thing, it goes in and out the other ear. We just, you know, we have our habits that we're used to and whatever. So I have a program. It's called Heal Thyself at Home. It's basically a 13-week course. And it's set up in a way to detoxify the main organs of the body for the specific purposes of regenerating your body. Um, the ancient Egyptians believed we had the ability to regenerate our skin, our bones, our eyes, our teeth. They literally believe that you could regrow your teeth if you went through a specific process. You can regenerate all of your organs. You know, Egyptians took it as far to saying that if you really followed it, you could become an immortal being. And that goes off into a whole other level. But I do believe you can get to a point of radically regenerating your body and at least looking 10 to 15, 20 years younger and feeling that way as well. So this program is pretty much mapped out for that. It's very simple. Um, when you log in, you know, start here, basic video, welcoming, telling you how the program works. Each week you have a series of videos to watch. It might be a, about an hour's worth of content per week. So you can still do this while you're doing other things, and it's education um, as you go, but it's also a specific plan. So the first week we got some recipes, we get you eating some whole foods, making some basic changes. Uh, by the time you get to week three, you've had some basic education in different areas. Um, there's content sheets with facts and links uh, to the stuff I've been talking about. Uh, and there's a whole calendar of what you're doing. By week three, essentially you're doing a colon cleanse. Uh, you're pretty much eating the stuff that tastes like porridge for four days. Um, you're also doing a couple of other techniques to really clean out your digestive system. Because once you clean out the shit, you get rid of the plaque, your body can then uptake good nutrients from the whole foods that you're eating or the juices. So we do that first, then we work on cleaning the liver. So we go, we go uh, colon, small intestine, liver, and then lymphatic system. And we regenerate all those, the rest of your body essentially falls into place. By week four, you do a seven day juice fast with all the content, recipes, everything you need. Um, after the juice fast, you have a whole meal plan mapped out by Chef Cynthia, one of the most amazing chefs on the planet, um, for 30 days. And so you follow a 30-day meal plan. Um, and again, during this time, you're getting a lot of education. Uh, a lot of people that have done this program said in the first three weeks they got their money's worth and they absolutely loved it. Uh, a few people that have been on the program that have gotten off of medications, lost a bunch of weight, feel great. Don't feel like reading it all. This is Scott and Fatini. Do you guys know them? They actually live here in Bali and Ubud. They actually used to live here at Vision Villas. You see the photos, a little bit different. And they said for their relationship especially, really improved. Um, Scott, I sat down with him at a restaurant, and he's just like, look, man, I don't know how I'm going to stop eating steak. Had his gut hanging out, and he's sitting there at the restaurant like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I just need to do this, so I'm willing to give it a shot. Now, remember when I said it was only seven days of a juice fast? He felt so good after seven days, what did he say? I might have taken that, but he, was, he had this big email, I edited it, but I think he ended up going like 40 days on juices and felt amazing. He was pre-diabetic, he weighed 100 kgs, went through the program, 
lost 15 kgs during the program, got rid of gout, um, exercises daily, essentially says this you know, lifestyle is actually a lot easier than he thought, because before he didn't really like eating fruits and vegetables, <laughs> but then he realized if you cook them correctly and put them together right, they taste great. Simon Bennett had Crohn's disease, essentially went through the program, cured his Crohn's disease, which is supposedly impossible. Some other people that have been through the 13 weeks and been through other programs Thomas Thong had uh, was it psoriasis, eczema, for a big part of his life, was able to heal that for the first time in his life. Oh, man. Kazi Pistis. A lot of people think that you're going to lose weight when fasting and, and getting on whole foods. She actually put on weight after the fast because it resets your hormones. Your HGH levels, testosterone, and other things are reset. Um, so you actually end up building more muscle. Um, and essentially, that's a little bit about the program. Uh, the Heal Thyself at Home program is $1,500. It's 13 weeks. Um, any questions you have, it's fully supported. So if you have issues, you can email me. You can have conversations that way. And yeah, essentially, it's a, it's a program to give you education, to give you motivation, to transform your life. So yeah, other things that I have, uh, online juice fast, like I said, is totally free. You can do seven days. Just get on there do a seven day juice fast. I don't recommend doing it while you're here because I used to come here and just promote fasting and then people would start fasting and then they hated each other and started breaking shit. They're like puking and crapping everywhere. <laughs> They're like, Tyler, you gotta stop talking about fasting at the program. But maybe when you get home. So do you guys have any questions? Mm. It's a really good question. We haven't really costed that out. We've actually talked about that because our chef specifically designed all the meals and we all ate the meals. So we have like the actual, it comes with the ingredients and grocery list and all that type of stuff. But she also, Chef Cynthia, shares a lot of information like where to go because she lives on the Gold Coast or did live on the Gold Coast. So she says it's actually cheaper if you go to farmer's markets in some of these places and buy bulk, you know, the greens and the different things. Um, but yeah, it'd be a really good question. I'm not really sure. I know that juice fasting can be a bit expensive because um, obviously, you know, to put a bunch of carrots and apples and beets and lemons through a juicer, but then you got to understand that you don't have any food cost, right? And it depends on how much juice you're going to drink. You might have two liters a day. You might have three liters a day. Um, so for that portion, yeah, it's, it's a really good question. But essentially, you know, in my opinion, health is the most important thing on the planet. And if you want to have a healthy business, if you want to have a healthy life, it's going to transform everything. Um, I know personally, after I do fasts, my business goes like this. Um, I, my business is solely based on Facebook. Um, future business principles are givers get. So the more I give, the more I will receive. Uh, sharing is having more. So it's... You know, the old model of doing business is like, hey, I know all this stuff. Come pay me and get some of it. New business model is, you know, Facebook is the largest social media platform on the planet. All I got to do is do a post on bananas, do a post on walnuts, do a post about cancer, do a post about diabetes, you know, talk about ancient Egyptian civilizations and health. And, you know, I do all kinds of posts, so I just put that out there. Um, and I get a certain amount of likes and shares from people. And as they start to read my articles and really feel in tune with the stuff that I'm sharing, you know, there's a relationship that's bonded. They ask me questions. I always answer questions for free online. So I build these relationships. And when people get sick, what do they do? They spend $16,000 and come to my 30-day program. I sell out all of my 30-day programs simply from Facebook, which is shocking. It's the, best, it's the best marketing on the planet, but there's a way of doing it. There's a way of connecting with people and constantly giving and caring and answering all their questions and really talking and showing, you know, whatever product you have, constantly posting pictures and sharing and interacting with other people and sending out that positive energy. So well, the reason I mention that is because when I did my last fast, I went out and did a coconut water fast on Chenigan, just across from New Salem, Just sat there and 
drink coconut water. I didn't just sit there. I was swimming. I was hiking. I was doing all this stuff. But I went an extended period of just drinking coconuts, 10 a day. 10 coconuts a day. And they're nearly a liter a piece. There's a lot of fluid. And they would just climb the things. I, I think I paid, I don't know, maybe a, a dollar a piece per coconut. So maybe 10 bucks a day is what it cost me. But when I came back, my brain was so on fire. My whole body had so much energy. I was just downloading. So I would write articles in that space. So whether you can afford $1,500 plus whatever it costs to eat healthy food and drink juices and whatever is besides the point right now. At some point, you know, it all comes down to what's our highest values. You know, if health was our highest value, we'd just do it. But if health is like number five, then we, you know, would rather spend some money on different things. But yeah, what it comes down to is when you can do it, you know, I'd highly recommend getting onto it. And like I said, it's free to do the juice fast. It'd probably cost you a few hundred dollars to buy all the materials. But you'd probably save, you know, you'd you skip going out to dinner two nights in a row in Australia and you've saved a couple hundred bucks. So, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys very much.